Well, I'm about to solve a future problem in a dumb way, and I don't care. I'm going to be taking this 10 gigabit switch and adding fans to it. Why? Because I can, and I can't leave things alone. Okay, so here's what's going on. I have this 10 gigabit CRS309 MikroTik switch, 10 gigabit, that's connecting three different servers in my rack, as well as a couple of other computers I use for multimedia stuff. So my issue is, is these SFP Plus transceivers get very hot, very hot, upwards of 180 degrees hot. So my original plan was to run Cat 6 and Cat 7 throughout the house, which I already did. So I already have a good backbone of Ethernet run through the house. So rerunning fiber and buying new transceivers for now is kind of out of the question. So my plan was to just put some fans on them and run them the way it is. Well, with these switches, the company, Microtik, recommends, since they run so hot, is having them spaced out. So instead of having them side by side, you'll have to alternate them one by one to give them space to breathe on each side, which essentially turns this 10 gigabit switch into a four port 10 gigabit ethernet copper switch. I was planning on adding scalability to it rather than just being limited to four clients connected to it. So to be able to run more, I want them side by side. But the problem again is heat. Anytime you do this, you run the risk of having the two inside transceivers overheat, possibly failing or whatever. Well, I'm going to be putting fans on it. So per Microtik manufacturer, you're not supposed to run them consecutive like this, again, because the two inside ones could overheat in that configuration. Or in theory, two of them side by side, one may cause the other to overheat. And also what they recommend is instead of spacing them out, you add in the option of fiber, which I could do. But the big key here is, is that I already had these fans in a box. I've got a box of 50 something odd fans, and these were some leftover five volt fans. Preferably, I would want some 12 volt fans. That would be easier to just plug up to an adapter and plug those straight in. So what I did years ago was, for another little project, I made a USB to fan output, which is five volts, since USB puts out five volts. So that will actually match up with these fans perfectly. Um, the only problem is, is that it will involve adding some extra little adapters. So I'll have to T off these guys. And then from there, combine that T into this one. And then from this one, an extender. And then from this to the main power to the USB. Not a big deal. I already had these laying around. So it'll just take a few minutes to hook them up, but hopefully not too bad. But there's a few key points about this switch that is really nice. Stock, it's completely passive, no fans, no anything, normally not a problem. Uh, there's also no external holes on the switch. So there's no way to route these fans outside in any way. Unless I cut a hole, that those little slots for mounting is too small. So what I found is that there's a spot in the back where you can take out a couple of screws in the fan or the rear heat sink for the CPU. It bends back just fine. Actually, it doesn't even bend it. It just temporarily just flexes it. Now, I know what some people are going to say, and I don't care. Oh, these transceivers, they're meant to run hot. They're meant to run upwards of 180 degrees, which is true. Um, they are individually. When spaced out, they can. Again, not side by side. The uh, other counterpoint is, is why don't you just ditch the copper and run some DACs, direct copper, where that transceivers are on each side already, just one already made cable, which is true. They are cheap, very cheap. Um, the other thing is just straight fiber. Fiber's cheap. But with that, I would have to buy some new transceivers, which would render these possibly not useless. I could do the alternating thing. But with the existing Ethernet that I've already run through the house, 
I'm just going to utilize that. I may have to buy another two more transceivers, which is no big deal. So it's whatever. The other option or the other complaint or bad thing someone may say is, oh, just buy another switch. Why are you dealing with this crap? Buy an enterprise grade switch. Well, because I already have it, and unless someone wants to donate some money for me to buy a switch, this is what I got and this is what I'm using. So without further ado, let's mod this thing. Okay, now these are Noctua NFA4 X10 5 volt fans. Each one only draws 0 0.05 amps. That's it. So all four, they will only be drawing 0 0.2 amps total, which is very, very good, very low. So if I wanted to, I could add a couple more fans inside of it and it still wouldn't be a problem. But either way, let's go ahead and open up the chassis. Now, uh, flipping it around, I'm not sure if you can read it or not. Let me adjust focus here. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, you can see that there's PS1 and PS2 spots on the board for additional power supplies. I think that might be for the wireless capability that they thought about maybe putting in on this switch. But up here, there's a fan header. I did already test these with a multimeter and there is no power on them. I think what's happening is, is I think that it's completely missing the voltage regulator that's on it or supposed to be on it. So that was my original first go to when I saw that I was really excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be an easy, easy deal. I can just solder on a fan header. Done. Well, no power there. So that's not happening. But here you can see the inside arrangement of the SFP plus ports and the way I'm going intending on doing this is going to be something along the lines of this There you go, that should be more than good enough airflow um, Again, they run hot upwards of 180 degrees even though they're supposed to be they're designed for that and everybody will argue and say oh it's not a problem don't worry about it stop worrying about stuff that doesn't matter you're wasting your time you're wasting money blah 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 well i'm doing it and i don't care if i can reduce these from say 82c which is about 180 degrees and reduce it down to i think 60 or so that'll be perfect i think that might buy it some extra life might get some extra life out of them i don't know but anyway again the key point is to so that I can run these transceivers consecutively side by side and not have them overheat so that I can use this eight port switch as an eight port switch instead of being limited by just four with the copper RJ45 transceivers. But yeah, the plan is to just add a few dabs of hot glue from a hot glue gun onto the top of each one of the transceivers. These little plastic things, they transmit the light from the LED that's at the base here so that at the front is the lighting for the connectivity to tell you if it's 10 gigabit, whatever, running less than 10 gigabit. I did previously replace the CPU heatsink thermal paste with Noctua NTH2. Did it make a difference? Probably not, but made me feel better about it. Well, let's go ahead and get this hot glue gun heated up and get to gluing. You know, those are in place pretty good. I'm just going to let it sit, let it cool off for a few minutes, let them harden up, and I think we'll be good. Do a little bit of cleanup. As, I, as you can see, there's those little strands of glue everywhere, so I'm going to let it all harden up good and see where we go from there. Okay, it's hardened up pretty good. They're pretty fairly solid in place for glue, but let's go ahead and do the cleanup of all this 
glue string that's everywhere. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Not too raunchy, but okay, let's go ahead and move on to the heat sink I was wanting to show you. On the heat sink, I was going to take out this screw here and that screw in the back. And I think that this will flex just enough. I couldn't do it on this side because there's that bend. It's too, too tight, too stiff. But on this side, I think it'll have just enough flex to be able to work out that cable through it for the adapter for the fans. So let's see what happens. Okay, and that's going to work out beautifully. Beautifully. And the nice thing about this thing too is that everything is reversible. I can just simply put those screws back, that goes back into place, take off the fans, remove the glue and it's back completely stock. So since I had the fans and all this stuff laying around, whatever, it works. It'll fix a problem. It'll allow me to expand my network with some equipment that I already have. So let's go ahead and do a little quick run and see how it, see if it will fit well. And perfecto. Bam. This will work out perfect. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get these fans wired up and everything cleaned up. Now here's the one of the adapters, one of the one of three that's going to be used. Two of these to connect two fans to one and then two fans to one. And then after that, just gotta wire them together, those two together, and then that'll stick out of the case. So let's get these wired up and cleaned up. Okay, there's those, and now two into one. There we go. And looks, I think all of that'll fit up just fine. Looks a little messy, but whatever. Again, I don't care. So let's push this back. Put that down in there. Maybe give us a little bit more length on that. Perfect. And there we go. Perfecto. And this should work out perfectly fine. Before I go ahead and put the top on and get it all secured, let's let me plug it up and make sure that it is working. So break out that little USB adapter that I made a long time ago. It's probably almost a decade ago now. But let's see what happens. And we have success. And that's a decent amount of little airflow for those little fans. I can actually feel it. Can't really feel anything out the ports. But either way, I can definitely feel it above the vent, the front grill. But I think I might be able to get some lower temps out of this. Let's get everything put back together, lid back on. Now with it plugged up, those fans are silent. You can't hear them at all. Those Noctua fans, especially the little ones, are super quiet. Now, you can see them through the front a little bit, but there's still plenty of air that they can pull in. 
the, I'm not too worried about airflow inside of the case. On my rack, I've got plenty of airflow going through the case. So any heat that's generated inside it from those SFP plus transceivers, it's not going to be a problem at all. So, all right, let's get it plugged up and check out the temperatures and see what the before and after is. Well, so here's the rack. It's really messy right now. I don't have anything labeled because I'm in the midst of going back and forth with stuff. But yeah, right now I've got one of the servers pulled out. So I've just got my little firewall, PFSense firewall, an HP DL20 APC battery backup. Um, there's my switch. But yeah, right now I've got them linked up four in a row the way that you're not supposed to do it with two of the Microtic transceivers in the middle and then two of the other transceivers on the outside so can't really hear the fans the fans for the DL20 is the loudest right now so yeah let's go check out the temperatures and see what we're dealing with okay so here we go um, here you can see the before temperatures I don't know why there was a spread between the two but this was with just two of the Microtech transceivers, the actual OEM manufacturer Microtech transceivers. Um, they report the temperatures. The other ones, the Ipolex or whatever the name of them they are, those don't report the temperatures for some reason. You'll see that in a second. But with these two, I had them spread out. They were at 82C individually. There was a gap between them. This was in the last port. That was in the, the next to the next to the last port. But that one was getting up to 82C which was almost right at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And that one was at 78, probably 170 something degrees Fahrenheit. So they were still toasty, getting hot. Well, after swapping them out and putting them side by side, we end up getting 64 to 65 C and then 66 to 67. A second ago, it was peaking out at 68. It might actually hit that here in a second. But again, that's with each one of those in a row. I don't know why that those IPOLEX transceivers are showing up as 850 multi-mode fiber transceivers because they definitely are not. And it's also definitely not reporting the temperature for some reason on those. So again, what I did, I put those on the outside so I could get a, get a good temperature reading of the ones, the two Microtech transceivers on the inside to see how hot I could get them. And right now, they're just hovering 68, 66, 65 C, just kind of swinging back and forth. And it's been running about half an hour now, a little bit longer, maybe 45 minutes. So right now, the temperature, temperature you're seeing, it's about a 30 degree to 26 degree Fahrenheit drop side by side. And this is, again, in the condition that they recommend you not running them because they'll overheat. And right now we're seeing a 30 to 26 degree Fahrenheit drop in temperature. So I think that is a good success. I now have a good feeling that I can now load that thing out with transceivers and not have any issues whatsoever with heat. In fact, it run cooler than they would if they were spaced out individually. So yeah, I think this is a really good success. I'm really, really happy with this. Very happy. Um, got to put those fans to use and got lower temperatures again in a worst case scenario situation where these things should be overheating and they're actually running cooler so heck yeah well that's a wrap hope you enjoyed the video i'm really really happy at the results and to say it again i'm ecstatic 26 to 30 degree fahrenheit drop i'm really really happy i wasn't expecting that much um, especially with them running in line like that one right next to the, another but so now I know that I can load that sucker out with transceivers, RJ45, copper, and know that there's not going to be any overheating problems whatsoever. But hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like this video or like some of the other material that I put out, check out some of my other videos. Give the channel a like and the button down there in the corner. I greatly appreciate it. I'm a growing channel and it'll help me out a ton. But again, thank you much. Have a good one.